Hi there. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the session. It's take control of your Azure SQL managed instance migrations with the Log Replay service. So my name is Rob Carroll, and I've been working with SQL Server for over 20 years now. So I previously worked at Microsoft uh, as a premier field engineer, and I've since worked as a database consultant in financial services, uh, defense sectors, amongst others. I joined Coyo in 2021 as a data platform consultant, and I help clients to modernize their SQL Server states and to migrate their databases to Azure. So who are Coyo? So Coyo specializes in analytics and AI, dedicated support, and data platform. And Coyo are Microsoft Gold Partners for data analytics, data platform, cloud platform, application development, and application integration. So we're going to cover these things today. So we're going to cover what is the log replay service, why would you use LRS, how do you use it, and finally, how you can take control of your migrations using LRS. So who has actually migrated to SQL Managed Instance previously? And who's actually heard of the log replay service? And who's used the log replay service? Cool, one or two, so yeah, thanks. So the log replay service is a free of charge cloud service to migrate uh, SQL Server databases to managed instance. And it uses log shipping technology to synchronize your on-premise databases uh, up to the, the managed instance. and. It supports full differential and log backups, so it enables you uh, to seamlessly migrate databases with minimal downtime. It provides monitoring to track the progress of the migrations, and it gives users more granular control over migrations because um, we can use PowerShell or Azure CLI commands to automate, and as I said before, we can use a differential log and log backups. So, why would you use LRS when there are so many other options for migrating? So let's just summarize some of those options and we'll look at where LRS fits in. So it's, the first one is native backup and restore, which is the, the simplest and easiest method. It doesn't require any specialist tools, but the downside is that it only supports restoring full backups. Uh, so there's downtime required to back up the database, copy and restore onto the managed instance. And next, we've got the DMS, Database Migration Service. So this supports a variety of sources and both online and offline migrations. But it does require firewall ports to be opened and sysadmin rights on the source instances. And we've got the Azure SQL Migration Extension for Azure Data Studio, which is a newer version of DMS. And it has richer features uh, but it only supports migrating from SQL Server. And if your backups are stored on a, a network share, then it, it requires the self-hosted integration runtime, and it requires firewall ports to be opened and sysadmin rights on the instance. And then we've got Log Replay Service, which is it uses the same log shipping technology as DMS and the, the Azure SQL Migration Extension but it provides the flexibility and control uh, and minimal downtime, which we'll show you later on. And there's a 30-day limit uh, for migrations using uh, the log replay service. After 30 days, then the job is automatically killed. And finally, we've got Managed Instance Link, which supports online migrations from SQL 2016 and above, and it uses always-on technologies. And there's no time limit for migrations using uh, Managed Instance Link. So I would like to say that Microsoft does recommend that you use the Azure SQL Migration Extension unless it doesn't support your scenario. So we're going to look at a customer scenario um, that I'm currently working on and how we ended up choosing the Log Replay service. So as I say, uh, I'm currently working on a client migration project from on-premise uh, SQL Server instances uh, to Azure Managed Instance. And they have the following requirements. So the first one is that they are using SQL Server 2012. So that rules out uh, using the 
uh, database, uh, sorry, the managed instance link, because that only supports 2016 and above. Uh, they've, got, they've got certain network and security restrictions in place, so we can't open network ports to Azure, uh, and we can't grant sysadmin rights on the, the source instance. Uh, so that rules out the database migration service and the Azure SQL migration extension. And they've got approximately 15 terabytes of uh, data and around about 40 databases to migrate. So although we could use native backup and restore in this scenario, they also have a one hour downtime window, uh, which makes that impossible to, to use native backup and restore due to the backup times, network copy times, and restore times on the, the managed instance. So that leaves us with log replay service as the best option in this, this scenario. So I'll just show off my uh, PowerPoint skills there for a moment. So how does the log replay service work? So let's have a look at a high level um, migration workflow and how we would use LRS to orchestrate that migration. So the first step is to take your backup files and copy them to Azure Blob Storage. So for the client I'm working with, we're using SQL Server 2012, so we need to manually copy those uh, backups up to Azure Blob Storage. And we do that using AZ Copy, uh, or you could also use the, the Azure Storage Explorer to do that. And if you're using 2016 and above, you can use the backup to URL feature and backup these databases directly to the, the storage account. So the second step is to start the LRS service, and this should be done uh, separately for each database. Uh, and that should point to the relevant folder on the, the Azure Blob Storage container uh, for that database. So we start LRS in two modes. We can either start in autocomplete or continuous. So autocomplete, LRS will, will restore all the backups up to the last specified file name that, that you um, that, that you specify in the start command. So uh, once it gets to the end and restores all those files, it'll automatically bring the database online. But you're not able to add any additional files once the migration is in progress. And continuous mode, uh, LRS will restore all the, the backups in the, the storage account. Uh, and then it will monitor that storage account for any new backup files that are uploaded. So this mode is recommended when there's active workloads running on the, the source database during the migration. And then you would complete LRS manually using uh, the PowerShell or Azure CLI commands, which we'll show you later. So the final step is to perform the cutover uh, from on-premise into the managed instance. So this is done automatically if LRS is running in autocomplete mode. But if we're running in continuous mode, then we need to stop our applications, take a final tail log backup, and then initiate the complete process manually using the PowerShell uh, command or the Azure uh, CLI commands. So let's look at how we can take control of the migration using LRS. And we do this with PowerShell. So PowerShell lets us create custom uh, migrations orchestrated directly using the PowerShell commands. So we'll, to do this, we need the Azure SQL uh, PowerShell module version four or later. And we can also run uh, LRS as a background job using the as job uh, parameter or the start job uh, commandlet in PowerShell. So when we start uh, LRS in continuous mode, the clients actually run synchronously. So they need to wait on the API to respond with a success or failure. And if we're scripting the migration, we need to start um, we need to start LRS command to then return control back to the script so we continue with the next uh, database backup job. Otherwise, we have to wait for each one to finish. So the job object returns immediately, um, so even if that takes a while to complete in the background. So that enables us to build scalable scripts and migrate large databases concurrently. So to start a migration, we use the start command. And to monitor progress, we use the get command. And to complete the migration, we use the complete command. So with 
um, this in mind, let's go back to the migration workflow slide we saw earlier and see how we can actually do this using PowerShell and you know, um, control our, our migration. So if you remember, in my client's case, they're using SQL Server 2012 databases. So we need to save our backups to a UNC share. And we use the compression and checksum commands for the backup. So compression will speed up the, the backup and network copy. And the checksum option will speed up the restore on the, the managed instance. And we run that as a PowerShell job using the start job command. So we then copy that up to the uh, Azure uh, blob storage account, and we use AZ copy to do that. Uh, and again, we run that as a background job in, in PowerShell. And once that uh, has copied up to the, the storage account, uh, we can then start LRS. So we do that again as a, a PowerShell job, um, and we use the start AZ SQL instance database log replay command, which is a bit of a mouthful. But what this does is it starts LRS in continuous mode, and it's going to take those backups from the storage account and restore them on the managed instance with no recovery. So that's key because using um, native backup and restore, we can't do that. We can't restore a database with no recovery. And uh, yep, so once LRS is in progress, the database on a managed instance will be um, uh, waiting for, for new files, uh, and, and LRS will monitor that, um, that, that storage account for any new files uploaded. And the database at this point is not accessible. It's in a restoring state, so you can't use it for read-only workloads. So when the full backup's restored on the, the managed instance, then we can take a differential backup. So we specify with differential, and again, we use the compression and check some options there. We run that as a, a PowerShell job, and we can then copy that differential backup to the, the storage account. And again, we do that using AZ copy, and we run that as a job as well. And when that differential restore is completed, we can then start taking our log backups. So we specify the, um, we, the we, we pass the backup log query. Uh, we run that as a PowerShell job, and we specify the checksum and compression options for that as well. So we're now in log shipping mode at this point. So uh, once we copy that up to the storage account, LRS will, will pick up that log backup. Um, and then you know it'll restore it as normal, and it'll wait in that um, state for 30 days, uh, or until we manually bring the database online or stop the, the LRS process. So, as I say, we, we can run like that for 30 days, but once we're ready to cut over, what we need to do is stop our uh, application workloads and then take a final tail log uh, backup. And we do that with no recovery. And what that does is it leaves the source database um, inaccessible, so no further data changes can be made at this point. So we copy this uh, backup uh, up to the, the storage account, again, using AZ copy. And we run that as a PowerShell job. And LRS will take this uh, backup and restore it as normal. Uh, but th this is the final backup. This is the, the tail log backup. So once that has restored, we're then ready to um, cut over uh, from on-premise into the managed instance. So to monitor the, the, the LRS process, uh, we use the get az SQL instance database log replay command. And that gives us this output here. So we can see there's a status of waiting. And the last restored and the currently restored file names are both the same. And that is our last tail log backup that we took uh, in the previous step. So when that's all synchronized, uh, we're ready to, to complete the, the LRS process and bring that database online. So we do that using complete AZ SQL instance database log replay. And we pass in the last backup name parameter. 
uh, and that should uh, correspond to the tail log backup that we took in the previous step, and that should also be the last restored file name uh, on LRS. So we run that command, and that brings that database online for us. Uh, so we're now ready to, to repoint our applications to use the, the Azure managed instance uh, and you know, continue our, our workloads against the, the, the MI. So just some uh, final thoughts there. Uh, so this is how we use PowerShell uh, w w with the client I'm working with to take control of the, the migration process and perform large-scale migrations into managed instance. Uh, and we've done, you know, this can be done with, with minimal downtime, less than an hour in, in our case. So uh, if we didn't use LRS, we would have to have taken a full backup, copied it to the storage account, then restored it. And the full backup of an eight terabyte database was taking approximately 16 hours, the copy, 14 hours, and then the restoring the MI, about four or five hours. So that's, that's a day and a half downtime um, you know, that, that that client would have had to experience if we didn't use LRS in this project. So just to wrap up, we'd like to uh, go through some um, best practices and some, some lessons learned from, from the migration. So Stripe and compress your backups. Uh, so you should probably be doing this anyway as a best practice, but Stripe in the backups enables us to write across multiple files and give us multiple backup threads. So that speeds up the backup process. It also speeds up the restore in the, the MI. And also, if we compress the backups, then it speeds up the network copy time. And configure a maintenance window on your managed instance. So you, you want to avoid any system um, updates interrupting your, your migration, so you can choose a a maintenance window on a managed instance through the portal to make sure it doesn't interfere with your migration time. And you should use full recovery. Um, now, bulk logged may work, uh, but it's not supported by Microsoft, so you can get into issues if you've got bulk insert data uh, in your database when you try to restore using LRS. And watch out for any broken LSN chains. Uh, LRS, um, uses the LSN chain to work out the restore sequence of the files. So if there's been any network issues that stopped an upload of a transaction log file, then you, LRS will report a broken LSN chain. When that's happened to me, I've manually uploaded the files, and LSN has just picked it up and just continued with the, the, the restores as normal. Uh, I've also had issues where there's been other backup jobs that have run, and they've, that's broken the LSN chain as well. So just make sure that you you know, if you're using um, your PowerShell scripts to back up the databases, make sure that you've disabled all your other maintenance jobs that, that are also taking backups. And don't forget the data migration assistant. So before you, you, you know, you migrate to, to managed instance, make sure you run through the DMA uh, and assess your code, your databases, and you can use the performance data collection feature to take a, a performance um, collection and run that through uh, the SKU recommendations, and I'll tell you what size of managed instance that you need uh, when, you, when you migrate. So I hope you've enjoyed the session. Um, please fill out the feedback form and come and visit us at the Koyo stand if you need more information. Um, and you know, if you want to talk, I'll be available uh, either outside uh, the auditorium or at the Koyo stand. Uh, for the rest of today. So I hope you enjoy your time uh, at, at the conference and enjoy the rest of today's sessions. Thank you.